Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'll be looking at Longo Match and we'll show you how to tag events during a match using keyboard shortcuts and subcategories. That gives us a lot more detail, a lot more information on our code, so then you can start to produce some statistics that can help with the analysis that you want to pass on to your coach or your performance director or whoever really. First of all, you need to set up a team. So we'll go into the team section on the software and you can edit a team so we can then assign uh, the different actions to certain players. So to set up a new team, we'll click on the teams button in the main window. And this will bring us into this sort of dashboard here where we can change a few settings. So if we just click on new team at the top here, and then we can decide what we're going to call our team. So today we'll just write Chelsea in there. And then you can down arrow here just to see how many players you actually want. So I'll just leave it as 15. And then bottom right hand corner we'll just click OK. So then you can see it's populated a new team in here. On the left hand side underneath our list of teams. And then in the main window here we can actually start to adjust some of the players. So depending on how much you sort of want to get into and how much sort of depth you want to go, we can click on this little shield here to upload the team crest. I've already got a badge saved, so if we just click that there and open, now it import the Chelsea badge into there for us. We can change the name here, so we call it the team Chelsea. Uh, we can change the formation, so if we wanted to say uh, three, four, three, and then click the little tick that will change the formation for us uh, we can change the color so i think after chelsea playing slightly darker blue so we can bring the wheel around there okay changes the color we can change the away color as well if we wanted to so we've got our team here so we can change some of the numbers around so if you highlight this sort of sort of substitution button here and click on two players and then they'll swap positions and you can do that for any players you want until you click back on this little icon here so now if we just click on the here this button that will highlight the player and then we can change some of the player details if we wanted to so if we just click on player 2 we can change the player's name so I don't know, Gary Cahill We can change his number, 24. And again, we could put his height, his weight, date of birth in, etc. We hit enter, and you'll see that this player here, this highlight player, has changed number to 24. When you're ready, you can then click save, and then that will save that team there so you can see I've made a Manchester United team and it's got the players names in here change the players names but for this instance we've just got this uh, Chelsea template here when you're finished you can click the back arrow and takes us out back to the main window and while it's not essential we do need to set up some keyboard shortcuts you can do it with a mouse but once you get used to the shortcuts um, it's a lot lot quicker to use those and to set that up, we'll first go to Preferences in the top right hand corner, click on that. And then Keyboard Shortcuts on the left hand menu. And then what you're looking for here is the Start Tagging Away Player and Start Tagging Home Player. So I've changed mine to W and Q. You can change them to whatever you like. Um, but just when you look at the keyboard, you want something fairly close to the numbers across the top. So that's why I've picked those two letters. So once you've changed those, you can click the back arrow, take you back to the main menu, and then we'll click on Analysis Dashboards. So you pick the dashboard that you want to amend. So I've got my new dashboard here. So I'll just click on one of my categories. So it brings up the window on the right hand side. And you can see here that I've selected P for my hotkey, because this is my pass section. But you can just click on change you can change that to whatever you want it to be 
and then to put as uh, shortcuts for your subcategories, click on this sort of little pencil icon here, and you can do exactly the same. So if you click on this little uh, pencil and paper, again, you can add in any um, sort of keyboard shortcut that you like. So when I click on that, so you can see that I've got S for success, F for failure, and then in my defensive midfield or attacking thirds, I've got D, M, and A as well. So we'll just click OK to come out of those. And you can do that for all your categories. So if I click on tackle, you can see that I've got T for tackle as my hotkey. And then my subcategories, I've got W and L for won and lost. We can also add in some zonal tags. So the position actually on the pitch where events um, where events took place. So if we click on, so we've got the tackle icon or the tackle category highlighted. And so I want to know where on the pitch that these tackles have taken place. So where it says field position, I just click on that and tag as a point. So what that will do is when we tag each event or each tackle during the match, uh, the pop-up window will come up and then we can use a cursor and we can just click on the football pitch on where exactly that tackle took place. Now you have to be a little bit wary about how much information you're putting into each tag because the more information you put in, uh, yes, the more details you get, which is good, um, but the longer it will take. So you have to balance up how much information you want uh, against how long that actually is going to take you to code a match. When you're finished, I haven't. you can just click on this save icon. I haven't changed anything, so it's not highlighted. And then you can click on this sort of back arrow just to take you back to the main menu. So now that we've created the shortcuts, let's go and show you how to actually use those to start tagging events during a match. So to tag events during the match, there are a few different ways to go about doing that. You can use the mouse cursor to select the team, the player, and then the category. So if we just watch this here, little clip, see there's a six successful pass by uh, Matic, number 31 for Manchester United. So I can select the Manchester United badge just here, then player 31, and then it's a successful pass, and then the midfield third. And then that pop-up window will come up, just confirming the details, and then we can click OK. And then we just pause the footage, and you can see that that pass has now been added in there to Manchester United player 31. You can also do that slightly differently. So if we just delete that off, just go back a second. So watch the clip, now it's successful pass. So I could just select a successful pass in the midfield third and then pop up, my pop-up window comes up. And then I, from here I can select Manchester United and player 31. Again, if you've made an error, you can change some of the details in here for the area, the outcome, your subcategories, and click OK. Again, and that's been added in there as well. If you don't want the pop-up window to come up, you can just select this little white box here if you're happy that you don't need to confirm the details. So let me just delete that again. Let's go back. So we've got where that successful pass finished. So a quicker way about doing this is to use the keyboard shortcuts like we set up earlier. So for my uh, tagging away players, which the Man United team has set up as the away team, I'll need to, my shortcut, sorry, is uh, W. So I can press W31, and you'll see that the Man United icon's highlighted, and the player 31 has been highlighted as well. So now I'm going to select Pass, so for that, my shortcut is P for pass, then S for success, and M for the middle third. So if I press those in quick succession, you'll see that that clip has been uh, added with those details. So if I go O, S, M, you'll see that it's been added a pass, it's successful in the midfield third for Manchester United, player 31. Again, you, you can stop that pop-up window from popping up uh, just by clicking that box on the right you see that's been added to our event list there. You can also um, code different events where, the, where they actually happened on the pitch. So if we just 
pause up there just for example if a tackle took place again same as before we could highlight Manchester United player two for example and then click one tackle you can see the details have been confirmed if we want to now show where that took part took place on the pitch there's a little icon in the center circle so you can click that and drag that anywhere on the pitch where that actually took place so we just drag it down there you can see that this little dot here signifies where that tackle took place and we can click OK and you'll see if we go to tackle a tackle for player number two has been added in there and that was one so if I delete that and that again that can also be done through uh, shortcuts so if I select W2 for the away team number two, you can see that's been highlighted. And then I can say uh, TW for tackle one. And you see that that's been signified tackle and then one again. And I can just select that cursor. I can move it fiddly and then drag that to wherever that took place and click OK. So as you can see, we've built up lots and lots of information, um, but you have to be wary about how much information you want to put into your tag, uh, how, much is, how long it's going to take you to do it. So it's brilliant to have lots and lots of information, but if it's taken you five hours to go for a match, uh, that's not going to be really beneficial because it won't really work in your, in your workflow. Uh, so you just have to marry up, so you have to balance how, how much information against how quick you'll be able to perform that code. So, We'll have a look now and show you how you can produce some statistics that you can then uh, identify sort of trends in matches or however you want to use them. So if you just go up to the top, go Tools, uh, Show Project Stats. We'll just minimise that. And then if we select, say, Teams, for example, select the Manchester United, and you can see the players' names down here, and then the uh, sort of categories across the top and you can see that they've started to be filled in. Look at the different events, uh, different players, if we select Manchester United, uh, passes for a certain players, so you can see that they've been populated in there as well. There's lots of different uh, sort of areas that you can have a look at. So that's how to tag events using shortcuts and subcategories and how to look at statistics as well. Uh, we'll link below the video on how to use the basics on Longo Match. So if you missed that video, you'll find that link below. Um, and if you, enjoyed the, if you enjoyed this one, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe.